Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, continuing with our um, uh, solutions of uh, uh, the balanced equations for uh, multiple servers. So, MMS system, uh, maybe I can again write here this, because we are continuing with um, uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, same system with uh, multiple servers. So, then uh, you we had solved equations for uh, P, not, P 1 and P 2, and now in general if you want to solve it for um, so, at uh, the point when you uh, you have uh, you know more than s people uh, or it just at the boundary. So, this will be lambda p s minus 1 when you have s minus 1 people. So, uh, incoming the, the way you can reach p s would be through uh, uh, one arrival and then here when you have s plus 1 people then uh, you know your service rate is s mu. So, it will be uh, you know again one person departs. So, then you will be back to p s and here it will be one arrival and one departure. So, then again you will remain at p s, right. So, therefore, this is the balance equation at this stage and um, uh, we can now substitute for, uh, because uh, yeah. So, I had shown you that the formula for p s up to p s minus 1 would be this. So, I just substitute for this in terms of p naught. So, this will be lambda into lambda s minus 1 upon mu into 2 mu into s minus 1 mu right then plus s mu p s plus 1 and lambda plus s mu into lambda raise to s. So, up to p s the same solution will go the same formula. So, mu into 2 mu into s mu. Okay. So, let us just if you simplify uh, you take this to this side and then uh, you know without spending time because this is surely you can do this calculation yourself. So, that from here you will subtract this expression right and you have s minus 1 mu here. So, you will get a s mu in the denominator from you will multiply and so when you multiply by s mu. So, lambda s s mu term will cancel out right and you will be left with lambda s plus 1. So, this is a simplification you can see it right away from here right. So, you will be left with only lambda s plus 1 upon. So, this will be mu raise to s and then 1 into 2 into 3 up to s. So, that is s factorial. So, that gives you uh, um, s mu into p s plus 1 equal to this and therefore, p s plus 1 will be uh, lambda by mu raise to s lambda by mu raise to s and a lambda. Uh, so, uh, the, the s factorial and then divided by s mu. So, 1 lambda upon yeah this is my lambda ok I should be able to write it uh, yeah this is lambda. Okay, lambda upon us. So, that means, when it is s plus 1, you have this term into lambda upon s mu uh, times 1 that and so, your rho is lambda utilization factor is s mu lambda by s mu now right s servers and just want to show you that the same formula will continue and then you can generalize for n uh, p n. So, um, now, you, if you write lambda p s then s mu p s plus 2, because after uh, you have more than uh, s people, then it, the same service rate will continue. So, s mu into p s plus 2 is equal to lambda plus s mu into p s plus 1. And this again, when you substitute for p s and p s plus 1 from here, then you will get the uh, expression that p s plus 2 is equal to lambda by mu raise to s into lambda upon s mu raise to 2. So, this is the factor which goes on increasing this remains the same s factorial lambda by mu raise to s is common and then it is lambda by s mu square. Say. So, now you can generalize for uh, you know you can write the general formula and that will be p n is uh, lambda by mu raise to n n factorial uh, uh, p naught. Uh, no that uh, yeah for, for n between 0 and s. So, this formula is ok for n between 0 and s that is what we were using here right and here for uh, p s. So, then, um, uh, but what n greater than s you are going to have lambda mu raise to s upon s factorial 
and then uh, see we have uh, yeah let me show you yeah so this is then this is lambda by s mu square so i am writing lambda by s mu uh, no no i don't have to write s here so this is yeah lambda by mu raised to n minus 1 upon s raised to n minus s so either s you can include with this then it will be lambda by mu raised to n minus s so if you are writing in the formula for pn lambda by mu raised to s upon s factorial this is the common thing and then it will be lambda by mu s raised to n minus s which i choose to write as lambda by mu raised to n minus s and divided by s raised to n minus s so it's the same thing into p naught if n is greater than or equal to s right and um, so now since we have the general uh, expression uh, you can use the convention that zero factorial is 1 and therefore one can be replaced by lambda by mu because when you add up see now you want to uh, use the fact that uh, summation pi i varying from 0 to infinity is 1 so when you write p0 so therefore uh, and all others are also in terms of p0 so the series will become 1 plus and so on divided by p0 so one we are replacing by zero factorial so in that case you see this will be your this thing and here uh, the later part that means from s onwards s plus 1 s plus 2 to infinity the terms that you will get you will have this power series and this will be convergent if lambda upon s mu is less than 1. So, as we have anyway seen that you know if this is greater than 1 then your things will blow up if your arrival rate is more than s mu then uh, the q size and everything will blow up. So, we have to anyway work in this under the system that this is less than 1. So, for any feasible uh, if we want to consider a balanced form and uh, stationary system. So, therefore, uh, so this then can be written as s to infinity lambda by s mu raised to n minus s under the condition that lambda upon s mu is less than 1. So, this is the expression and of course, we are not going to say there is no other closed form for this and when you are given the values lambda mu and s you can just compute this value right. So, now uh, uh, start computing the uh, uh, exp uh, expressions for l, l q, w, w q and so on. So, uh, let us just look at the expression for l q which will be n minus s and you can see the reason because there is a neat expression for this thing uh, for the probabilities when uh, n is s or more more than s. So, I am therefore, writing l q and since um, uh, I can get l from l q therefore, um, it is enough that I compute this and once I get l q I get l uh, then I get w I get w q. So, that is the thing. So, let l q so we will write as n minus s p n where n is varying from s to infinity and here if you want to write um, n minus s s j then n is s plus j right. So, therefore, uh, you can then say that uh, j varies from 0 because n is varying from s. So, n plus s the j will vary from 0 to infinity and this will be n minus s is j into p s plus j. So, we can we have a nice way of writing the probability for this. So, which will be uh, see here um, the s part is uh, lambda by mu raised to s upon s factorial and then this the, for the j this will be lambda by mu raised to j upon s raised to j right and this j is there because n minus s. So, you are computing l q right? expected uh, number of people in the q right and this is p 0 right. So, um, Yes, so I can remove uh, lambda by mu raised to s upon s factorial, take it outside the and p naught outside the summation sign, then I am left with this j into lambda by mu raised to j upon s raised to j. And uh, here this I can see lambda by s mu 1 s I can take outside, then I will be left with lambda by s mu raised to j minus 1, right. 1 lambda by s mu I take outside, which I am writing as rho then it will be lambda by s mu raised to j minus 1. So, j times this which is the uh, you know derivative of lambda upon s mu raised to j. So, this whole thing by taking rho outside uh, is equivalent to the derivative of this right. And since uh, lambda upon s mu is less than 1, we know that this series is also convergent. This is the arithmetical geometric form with common ratio as 
lambda upon s mu, which is uh, uh, less than 1. So, therefore, this is a convergent series. So, I can uh, take the first, of course, I should have written the derivative outside and then since this is a convergent series, I can uh, bring the derivative sign inside and this is what you have. And therefore, now this is a geometric series, which adds up to 1 upon 1 minus rho, right? this part summation and then derivative of this will be 1 upon 1 minus rho whole square. So, actually, yeah, no, no, what I should have done is, I first I write derivative inside and then I take it outside, because it is a convergent series. So, uh, you can interchange summation sign and uh, um, derivative sign. So, now I take the derivative outside, then this sums up to 1 upon 1 minus rho and the derivative gives me 1 upon 1 minus rho whole square. So, therefore, now you have a neat expression, except that p naught is a little cumbersome. So, then you have this expression for uh, L q and then I can get my w q, which will be L q by lambda and because we said that these relationships are valid even in the general case. Uh, so, uh, 1 upon, so therefore, this will be 1 upon s mu, when you divide this by lambda, this will be left with the 1 upon s of mu and you have this expression. Then, then after that you will say w, w q plus and remember the difference between w and w q will still be that of one service, because your departure from service is 1 at a time. So, therefore, this will be not 1 by s mu, it will be 1 by mu. right? And similarly here, this lambda will L will be L q plus lambda by mu. So, uh, keeping that in mind, you have all these relationships. Now, let us just look at some of the, you know, these, um, uh, yes, and I wanted to, show, uh, yeah, the tables that I am going to show you have been taken from this book and I will give you the proper references all at the Ravindran and Phillips book. So, I have taken some tables where they have plotted uh, the L with respect to, uh, you know, the rho sign, rho where uh, s is varying for different values of s. So, the rho changes, so they have plotted. So, let me show you the uh, graph here. So, figure 2, I just want to um, explain that here you see the horizontal axis is the utilization factor. That means, rho equal to lambda by s mu. So, different values of uh, rho go going from 0 to 1 and the vertical axis uh, is the steady state probability of 0 customers in the system. So, look at the uh, gr um, curves in the uh, diagram. Uh, in the graph, then you see that um, the utilization factor is coming down drastically uh, as s increases. Okay. So, for the, that means, for uh, 0 0.8 for example, uh, the, the top, the top uh, line shows you the uh, utilization factor, the, the uh, you know, uh, fa utilization factor versus the uh, probability, steady state probability of uh, nobody, no customer in the system. So, these are the different lines and you see that the um, utilization factor uh, when it is S, S is 25 is barely, uh, is even less than 0 0.3. Okay. So, uh, that of course, uh, we also expect because more the server, the lesser the utilization factor. Um, and, but there again as we said that it is always a conflict between you know having congestion or having more uh, servers and that depends on what your priorities are. So, anyway this uh, the, uh, the graphs actually show you what we expect that as this will uh, uh, go, go up the um, uh, utilization factor will come down. But the other important uh, contribution of this uh, graph is that uh, you know you can plot because uh, remember the expression for the steady state probability uh, when you had uh, uh, more than one server, uh, the expression was uh, lengthy one. So, now you can actually uh, plot for different, so that means if you know the utilization factor, say for example, I know the my utilization factor is 0 0.7 and then if I want to uh, find out what the corresponding value of p naught will be. So, then I will go along this vertical line of 0 0.7 and if my number of servers are 4, then you see wherever this curve s equal to 4 cuts the uh, vertical line 0 0.7. So, that point and I go horizontally then ac across to the vertical line. So, I can then find out the uh, corresponding value of the uh, p naught. 
and so that will help me because then I can make my computations for L, L q and so on or even for p n's I will need the value of p naught. So, then it will help me to just plot the uh, value given my uh, utilization factor and the number of servers then I can uh, find out the corresponding value of p naught. So, this is the contribution of uh, the figure 2 and uh, later on when I work out an exam when I have worked out an exam. Uh, I will use the values. Okay. Now, I will show you uh, another graph. Yeah, this is utilization factor, uh, your uh, uh, the versus. So, you are plotting the utilization factor on the horizontal axis and steady state expected number of customers. So, number of customers in the system, right. So, utilization factor and therefore, it says the and for different servers as you expect. So, for example, if your utilization factor is 0 0.3, for s equal to 25, you can see that, uh, well, oh, let us see, this is uh, at, okay. at utilization factor 0 0.4, that means, your lambda, bar, lambda upon s mu is uh, 0 0.4 and then if you go up, then you see that uh, for s equal to 25, the number of people will be 10. Okay, so, now total number of people, but you, you have, uh, so this is the steady state expected number of customers, which is L. So, the number L would be around uh, 10, when you have 25 uh, servers in the system. Now, if you uh, uh, come down, uh, that means, uh, if you come down to uh, or if you go higher, then of course, uh, these as the utilization factor increases, then we know that uh, the number of people in the system will go to infinity, um, the, because uh, it is never advisable to have your uh, S mu equal to lambda. So, therefore, um, this should never come very close to 1, the, uh, the your row, right. So, that of course, is depicted by as we saw it for um, one server, the same uh, phenomena is uh, shown, is repeated here also, but uh, this again gives you an idea as to uh, the utilization factor versus the number of um, uh, servers you have and the number of uh, customers you will have in the system. So, for different values, you can just plot and see, right for uh, what is the number of. So, for example, for 0 0.5, if you go again the number of uh, people in the system will come down, uh, will be again uh, around 11 or something. Yeah, you can say that for 25. Yeah, but then if you have only um, uh, s equal to 1 and 0 0.5, then you expect only 1 person to be in the system. So, this is the kind of. So, therefore, um, these I mean the, the uh, conclusions are are the ones that you expect, right? but they sort of give you more accurate, uh, you, you can accurately find out for the number of um, uh, the utilization factor, number of servers, what will be the expected number, because uh, computing p naught. So, you can from here only uh, just find out the uh, for different values of uh, rho, you can find out uh, and for, uh, for, number val for number of servers, you can find out the expected number of people in the system. So, once you can do that, then if you have computed L, then you can find out L q, you can find out W q and you can find out your W. So, this is just to give you a feeling about uh, the multiple system, multiple servers and how um, you know, these quantities L, L q, W, W q behave. So, you see now uh, interesting example from uh, Ravindran and Phillips and Solberg, actually there are three authors. So, uh, Ravindran, Phillips and Solberg. And uh, so, now they are trying to show you uh, that uh, pooled versus separate servers uh, and what would be uh, uh, what would be the conclusion. So, let us look at this example. So, there are two business working businessmen working in adjacent offices, each requires secretarial service and they each produce an average of four letters a day. You know, this is a simplification, but anyway whatever the work, what we are saying is the average of four letters a day to be typed and the secretary can be expected to require an average of 1 5 of a day to type one letter. That means, uh, the rate of uh, typing letters by secretary is 5 letters a day and the um, businessmen each is uh, producing 4 letters a day to be typed. Okay. So, the question is should they get together to form a two person secretarial pool. The pool means that whenever anybody has a letter ready, when any one of the two secretaries who are free, they will type the letter. So, it is not that you know one secretary to the one businessman and so she will only work for uh, a particular business for her boss only and only when the letter is ready by the boss, she will type it. 
So, by pooling, uh, it would be possible for each of the businessmen to access both the secretaries, that is the idea. Or should the each man have his own secretary? So, this is the question and let us try to answer through this model of MMS, which we have um, just now talked about. And uh, you see, so let us see. So, if you take a single uh, system, then it will be just uh, uh, input is uh, you know four letters a day, and the secretary is typing five letters a day. So, each system can be considered as a MM1 system, right? Um, so, um, and therefore, your rho will be 0 0.8, the um, uh, utilization factor 4 by 5 is 0 0.8, and the mean delay, which is W q will be lambda upon mu, mu minus delay means that before the letter has to wait for time, some time before it uh, uh, gets started uh, to be typed by a secretary. Uh, so, then w q is lambda upon mu into mu minus lambda which is 0 0.8. So, that means, um, on the average a letter will sit for uh, you know uh, fourth fifth of the day uh, on the secretary's desk before it is being typed, uh, it, it before it will start being typed, typing begins on that letter. So, the mean delay is um, four fifths of the day, right. Now, uh, and the same applies to the second businessman also, because they are identical uh, systems, MM1 systems with the same uh, data. So, therefore, uh, the, the second businessman also will have the same thing happening to his letters, that for four fifths of the day, uh, the letter will be waiting on the average, and then uh, st uh, the typing begins. Now, suppose you pool the system, then your input will be, uh, you know, eight letters a day and you have two servers now, each of them uh, producing uh, uh, typing five letters a day. So, then this is the MM 2 system, right. And your rho will be again lambda upon 2 mu, which is 8 by 10. So, therefore, this is 0 0.8 and your lamb lambda by mu is 1.6, right. So, then a P 0. Now, this is where your um, uh, the graph that I had talked about uh, come in handy. Of course, this is a small system and uh, so therefore, I have shown you the calculation uh, even otherwise. Yeah, this is this, right. I have shown you the calculation, but uh, see you can see from uh, that means for uh, lambda by uh, s 2 mu, s mu is 0 0.8. So, corresponding to uh, uh, 0 0.8 and 2 servers, if you look at the uh, graph here, figure 2, so 0 0.8 and you want to go up to 2. So, you see um, this is a little above 0 0.1, so 0 0.11. Yeah, you can see in the graph uh, for um, lambda by s mu equal to 0 0.8 and two servers. So, this is just above 0 0.1, so 0 0.11 right. and which also by our calculation comes out to be 1 by 9. So, this is 0 0.11. So, for larger systems you can, if the graph is plotted, you can just uh, check the value, uh, you know look up the value for p naught without having to do the lengthy calculation. Okay. And therefore, your L q would be uh, again by the formula and then so w q that we so by uh, little's formula we have w q as uh, this number which is 0 0.35 so therefore by pooling the mean delay has come down to 0 0.35 earlier the mean delay was we had computed it was fourth fifth of the day right which was uh, right and so here um, now it is 0 0.35 which is much less than 4 by 5 right because if you multiply this is uh, the mean delay uh, here, what is it? 4 fifth of the day. So, if you want to compute it in person, yeah, this is uh, 0 0.8, the mean delay is 0 0.8, okay. so which is much less than point, uh, uh, which is much very, very high compared to 0.35. So, by pooling definitely your mean delay will come down. So, it, it might not be, you know, uh, if you put the ego side apart, you know, like having your own secretary. And of course, uh, probably this goes against intuition also, because um, you may feel that if you have one person to exclusively to do your job, then you should get it done faster. But uh, certainly, the data here shows that uh, this is not the case. By pooling, it will always help you to get your work done faster. Okay. Now, um, yeah, mean delay we had computed at 0 0.8. So, therefore, um, this is very high compared to this number. Okay, now, let us see, we can again play around with few numbers. Suppose, you say that okay, this data was particularly uh, tailored, uh, so that uh, the, the difference is so, so much 0 0.8 and 0 0.35. Now, suppose, one of the businessmen 
So, now suppose one of the businessmen has only two letters a day, then the mean delay for his the letter getting typed will be 2 upon. So, this is the number of letter mu mu upon lambda, lambda minus uh, mu sorry uh, I have said the wrong way. 2 is the number of letters that arrive per day. So, lambda is 2, mu is 5, because 5 letters get typed uh, the secretary can type 5 letters a day. Uh, mu is 5. So, this is lambda is 2. So, lambda upon mu into mu minus lambda. So, this will be 2 by 15, which is 0.133. So, with his own secretary, uh, the mean delay would be of the order of 0.133. Now, if uh, we pool the two secretaries, then your lambda becomes 6, because the first businessman is one of the business businessman is sending uh, getting 4 letters to be typed and the other one has only 2. So, lambda equal to 6 and 2 mu will be 10, because each of them can type 5 letters a day. So, therefore, p 0 is 1 by 3. Now, this we get from the figures that I have given you. So, therefore, uh, for uh, lambda and mu for these values of lambda and mu, you find out p naught, which comes out to be 1 by 3 from the figure and therefore, your uh, w q would be 0.11, that means the mean delay would be 0.11, which is still less than 0.133. So, you see pooling definitely is a better option um, with two letters and the secretary and the um, man using his own secretary, even then the delay that he encounters is uh, more than what he would encounter if he, uh, if the two secretaries uh, services are pulled up and then uh, they type letters as they come. So, you see even though as I said in the beginning uh, in somewhere in the, the last lecture that you know you cannot take the values that we compute uh, through the such models as exact, but they do definitely uh, give you um, uh, you know uh, they are they, they good guiding parameters, they give you provide you with good parameters to to make your, to help you make your decisions right so even though the numbers may not be so exact like 0.35 and 0 0.8 but it definitely shows that the difference is there and so you can uh, the efficiency of the system gets improved by pulling so your services that you have supervise and you know like um, uh, so many banks and so many other places in public places if you see uh, that sometimes uh, even at airport counters and so on, you feel that you know separate queues, because once you once a customer joins a queue, then he or she cannot change the queue. So, you see that way uh, you can immediately see that uh, I mean this kind of model shows you that a uh, lot of time is being wasted. I mean the system is not working efficiently, because you are not pooling the resources. So, somehow uh, uh, the, the feeling that uh, separate queues will be more efficient and you know, your work will get done faster. So, that belief is not supported by uh, uh, this model and uh, it is a reasonably uh, correct model in the sense that it, it gives you idea as to what happens when you pull up the resources. So, uh, this is all about it and we will continue with the. So, figure 2 I just want to um, explain that here you see the horizontal axis is the utilization factor. That means, rho equal to lambda by s mu. So, different values of uh, rho go going from 0 to 1 and the vertical axis uh, is the steady state probability of 0 customers in the system. So, first of all if you look at the uh, gr um, curves in the uh, diagram uh, in the graph, then you see that um, the utilization factor is coming down drastically uh, as s increases. Okay. So, for the, that means, for uh, 0 0.8 for example, um, s equal to 1, the, uh, the, the top, the top uh, line shows you the uh, utilization factor, the, the uh, you know, uh, fa utilization factor versus the uh, probability, steady state probability of uh, nobody, no customer in the system. So, these are the different lines and you see that the um, utilization factor uh, when it is, s is 25 is barely uh, is even less than 0 0.3. Okay. So, uh, that of course, uh, we also expect, because more the server, the lesser the utilization factor. Um, and But then again as we said, that it is always a conflict between you know having congestion or having more uh, servers and that depends on what your priorities are. So, anyway this uh, the, uh, the graphs actually show you what we expect that as the number of servers will uh, uh, go, go up, the um, 
uh, utilization factor will come down. But the other important uh, contribution of this uh, graph is that uh, you know you can plot because uh, remember the expression for the steady state probability uh, when you had uh, uh, more than one server, uh, the expression was uh, lengthy one. So now you can actually uh, plot for different. So that means if you know the utilization factor, say for example, I know the my utilization factor is 0 0.7, and then if I want to uh, find out what the corresponding value of p naught will be, so then I'll go along this vertical line of 0 0.7, and if my number of servers are four, then you see wherever this curve s equal to four cuts the uh, vertical line 0 0.7. So, that point and I go horizontally then ac across to the vertical line. So, I can then find out the uh, corresponding value of the uh, p naught and so that will help me because then I can make my computations for l, l q and so on or even for p n's I will need the value of p naught. So, then it will help me to just plot the uh, value given my uh, utilization factor and the number of servers, then I can uh, find out the va corresponding value of p naught. So, this is the contribution of uh, the figure 2 and uh, later on when I work out an exam, when I have worked out an example, I have used the, uh, I will use the values of p naught from uh, this graph. So, I will take up this exam, I have taken this case study from the state hospitals in, in the U and this is from the book Hillier and Lieberman. Again, this reference will also will be given at the end of the uh, course and uh, see the, the state hospitals in the US are called county hospitals. So, um, the, the data was collected from uh, the uh, county hospital and uh, the emergency room is considered because that can be modeled uh, really well. So, here emergency room and the arrivals and, and we are considering the morning shift. Have I written something somewhere here? Yes. So, this data uh, refers to the early morning shift. So, early morning shift and that uh, uh, I do not know for some reason this is what happens that often uh, the emergencies are in the early hours of the day, uh, early hours of the morning. So, uh, arrivals are 1 per half hour right. So, that means your arrival rate is lambda equal to 2 and here again uh, it is it was found suitable to uh, model uh, the thing by Poisson arrivals and of course, the and the uh, uh, service process is uh, exponential negative exponential. So, uh, that means, uh, since one every half hour, so two, arri two arrivals per hour, then a doctor requires an average of 20 minutes to treat a patient, okay, which means that mu is 3 patients per hour. So, um, your uh, this thing also, uh, so if it is negative exponential, then the inter arrival times between uh, the service, the service times would follow uh, negative exponential distribution. Now, um, there are two alternatives, which the um, uh, hospital uh, hospital management has to consider. They have one doctor to manage the emergency room. So, either uh, they continue with the uh, with the one doctor or to add another doctor. That means, your number of uh, servers will go up to 2. So, these are the two alternatives uh, just for the morning shift. It is not for the whole day, because for the rest of the day uh, your lambda may change and even your mu may change. Okay. So, for the morning shift, this is the uh, these are the two alternatives which are being considered. So, now let us look at the data and so all the calculations have been made with uh, s equal to 1 and s equal to 2 and so let us look at the, uh, the, the data. Yeah, so, this is steady state results from the MMS model. Oh, so, there should be a gap between s and model for the MMS model for the county hospital problem. Okay. Now, uh, for s equal to 1. Uh, the row, the traffic intensity is 2 by 3, but when it is um, s equal to 2, it will become uh, mu lambda by 2 mu. So, this will be 1 by 3. So, uh, intensity will come down to 1 by 3. P naught your probability um, when there is no patient in the system in the emergency room, this is 1 by 3 and uh, here it is 1 by 2. Then P 1, uh, okay, the computed the value of P 1 also at one patient, it will be 2 by 9 for s equal to 1 and 1 by 3 for s equal to 2. So, again the number of patients, uh, the, the probability of P 1 will be uh, 1 by 3. Then P n for n greater than or equal to 2 is 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 raised to n and here it will be for s equal to 2, it will be 1 by 3 raised to n. So, everything obviously, we expect all these numbers to come down, but the uh, drastic uh, difference is seen where in L c L q is 4 by 3. So, a patient has to wait, right? the q is 4 by 3, whereas for s equal to 2, it is 1 by 12. 
So, that is really um, a remarkable difference. Then your uh, number of people in the system on the average would be 2, whereas here it will be 3 by 4 okay, for s equal to 2. Then w q uh, the time uh, average time uh, spent in the queue waiting for to be treated by doctor here it is 2 by 3 hour and uh, for the s equal to 2 it becomes 1 by 24. And so, you see in an emergency room, it is very, very crucial that uh, a patient gets um, treatment as fast as possible, because it is a matter of life and death. So, here um, W q being 2 by 3, if only one doctor is attending to the patients, then it is a, uh, then um, it, the, the waiting time is high, okay. whereas it comes down drastically to 1 by 24 hours if your um, uh, S is 2. Okay. Then W, uh, the number of people waiting, that means Q and service is 1 hour, whereas here it is 3 by 8 hour. So, you see uh, these are the figures which immediately tell you that it will definitely be uh, to the, um, it will be uh, advantageous to have two doctors, because after all in an emergency room, you do not want patient, patients to die, because they have not got uh, um, immediate attention. And then probably W Q greater than 0 is 0.667 when s is 1, but it is 0.167 when s is 2. Okay. So, that means, a patient coming into the emergency room will have to wait that is high 0.667 when s is 1, but the moment you have two doctors attending it comes down to 0.167 and similarly probability w q greater than half uh, would be uh, 0.404 for s equal to 1, whereas it will be 0 0.022 for s equal to 2. So, therefore, this is also you know um, damaging, because in a hospital emergency room, if you have to wait for more than 1 by 2 of an hour, then this is uh, bad and the probability uh, is 0 0.404 when s is 1. So, this is not acceptable and similarly, w q greater than 1 hour is 0 0.245, uh, yes, which will be less than half, right. So, that means the waiting time. So, that will be 0 0.245, but for s equal to 2, it will be 0 0.003. So, you can just look at the numbers, the other two are not that important, but anyway. So, this data, so therefore, we are able to then conclude that uh, the uh, single doctor ha uh, will give you long waiting period, which is not very desirable for an emergency room, for a hospital emergency room, but two doctors you expect prompt service. And so, therefore, anybody looking at this data and this is what this model has helped us to um, uh, you know, generate that data and see that uh, you compare very, uh, you can compare the uh, performance of the emergency room when there is one doctor and when there are two doctors. So, if um, uh, finances is not a consideration, uh, it would be very helpful to have two doctors. Okay. And then again, I just want to make a point about uh, uh, pooling that what we were talking, the example I gave you in the earlier. So, pooling uh, we saw that if, if uh, the um, waiting time is the main consideration, then pooling will always help, because we saw that even with the, you know, when two businessmen having their own secretaries, they had to wait, the letters had to wait longer, but when the, uh, F, when the services of the two secretaries were pooled, uh, the um, waiting time for the letters to be uh, typed uh, came down, right. And uh, if, if there is some legis legislation or something, then it is a different thing uh, that you cannot, uh, uh, you have to have separate queues. But otherwise, um, uh, if the main consideration is to avoid uh, long delays, then pooling is the answer. So, that is another answer, um, that is the, you know, again the model helped us to arrive at that conclusion. Okay. Now, let us look at another um, uh, kind of model which is limited or finite q variation of the MMS, call it MMS k model. So, here uh, the idea is that you cannot allow uh, q, uh, more than k people in the system. So, you, know, uh, you could just take the example of an emergency room in a hospital, uh, you know it may not be possible to, uh, because people come they need beds, they are it is emergency or they are on stretchers. So, there you definitely ro need room for um, uh, these uh, patients arriving for uh, emergency service. So, then uh, you the space is limited and therefore, you cannot allow for infinite queue size. Right? Then uh, you can also have uh, uh, many other and as we said that, uh, you know the petrol station, you, you may not 
you, you could not have an infinite number of cars waiting to be serviced. So, therefore, again you have a limited space for the cars to be waiting and that uh, the number usually is, if you are big even then it cannot be more than 5 to 6 cars, which can be uh, accommodated by the petrol station, where they are waiting to be serviced, okay, depending on the number of pumps the uh, petrol station has. Anyway, so uh, this is a very um, uh, reasonable and this uh, uh, this will model realistic situations where your limited space, that means your finite q, you can, cannot allow for infinite q. So, the only change that you would have to make um, uh, in the MMS model would be that your lambda n will be lambda for n varying from 0, 1 to k minus 1 and for n equal to k it will be 0. So, that means you will um, uh, you will um, not allow people to come even once you have k people in the system then you will not allow people to enter the system essentially. right? Um, and uh, here uh, the, the uh, q will reach a steady state even if lambda is greater than s mu. See remember for infinite size we had to restrict lambda less than s mu, but because otherwise uh, the number would have been blown up right. Your, your L the average number of uh, people in the system and so on would blow up if uh, lambda was greater than s mu in case you allowed infinite uh, q size. So, here um, uh, because you are not uh, permitting your q size to be more than k. So, then um, lambda greater than s mu is also permissible right. And so, the q size q size will never exceed k minus s and the total number of people in the system will not exceed k. So, you have s servers and your k size uh, uh, cannot be more than k minus s. Also, so uh, as I told you, the example is the emergency room of a hospital. Also, you see there are situations, there are places where uh, customers are choosy and they would not like to wait. Uh, they would not like to enter the system if there are more than uh, k people already. I mean, they might consider that k number to be a crowd, and therefore they would uh, go away. Now, such a phenomena is called balking uh, because you are losing out on customers since you have limited space. Uh, so you. Uh, you are losing customers and you may also be losing out on goodwill. So, um, we will uh, look at this aspect and uh, essentially uh, one would like to know what kind of uh, uh, what kind of business you are losing out because your people uh, are your customers are being turned away because uh, uh, you do not have enough room. And of course, uh, for emergency ro uh, rooms in a hospital, legislation requires that if you cannot accommodate a patient right away, then you have to uh, send them to another person, another hospital. So, there the legislation requires that you turn away uh, patients if you do not have enough room for them. So, all these considerations are there. Okay. So, um, we will look at uh, balking and we will try to through example try to see uh, uh, how you estimate the loss of uh, revenue because you have lost customers. And then of course, that might also um, uh, encourage you to um, uh, invest in um, uh, increasing the waiting space or waiting room, so that uh, to compensate for the uh, loss in uh, business. Okay. So, now um, of course, I um, will give you the um, expressions for MMSK also, but right now it will be easier to just uh, write down the balance equations for mm 1 k model and then the arguments uh, for mms k will also not be much different except that you will have to take care of the s servers. So, um, for mm 1 that means one server, but you have finite q. So, the balance equations will be of course, when there is uh, nobody there in the system then one arrival comes and then you can go from uh, p 1 to one departure. So, therefore, this is the balance equation right. And so, that gives you p 1 equal to lambda by mu p naught. And uh, so, here see the transition diagram is no different from m m 1 except that uh, there will be no state after k. And so, therefore, you will have only that many balance equations. So, that is only the difference that is why I did not draw the uh, transition diagram. Anyway, and so, for um, when there are n people in the system then lambda plus mu, one arrival, one departure, again you are back with n pe people in the system, then this will be uh, n minus 1 people, you can reach p n, uh, you can reach n by one arrival and when you have n plus 1 people, then you can reach again uh, state n by one departure and this will be valid for n 1, 2 to k minus 1. Right. And then uh, the last one, and when you have k people, then only 
departure is allowed, because no arrival. right? And so, from p k minus, so that means from k minus 1, again you can reach k uh, by one arrival. So, this will be the last equation. right? Uh, uh, surprisingly, you do not, and so therefore, uh, that is okay. This, uh, this makes sense, because uh, you cannot go away from here. Uh, you cannot have any, allow any arrival here. So, this will be the equation. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, we will not need this equation actually when you are obtaining values for p 1, p, p 0, p 1, p 2, because from here when you see when you put uh, n equal to k minus 1, p k value will be available uh, even from here. So, you do not really need it, but just for completeness sake we want to write it down. And so, now one can uh, solve these uh, uh, balance equations to get the corresponding uh, relevant probability. So, just as for M M 1 uh, model, we will just so solve those balance equations and you will get p n is equal to lambda by mu raise to n p naught and varying from 1 to k. So, let me just show you the calculations for as I told you that the uh, last equation will not be needed, the last one, one but one equation can uh, will give us the value of p k. So, the last but one equation is lambda plus mu p k minus 1 is equal to lambda p k minus 2 plus mu p k, right? because when there are k people in the system, no arrivals are allowed. So, this is your last but one equation. And since you have obtained the uh, formula for p k minus 1 and p k minus 2, so I just substitute. So, therefore, your mu p k is equal to lambda plus mu times lambda by mu raise to k minus 1 minus lambda times lambda by mu raise to k minus 2 into p, two, p naught. Right? Everything is in terms of p naught. So, therefore, um, just simplify lambda by mu raise to k minus 2 you can take outside. So, then you will be left with this expression and here you can simplify. So, uh, mu lambda and lambda again you can take outside. So, it will be lambda plus mu minus mu by mu lambda is outside here. So, this gives you a lambda by mu and therefore, this becomes lambda square by mu, but then you have a mu p k here. So, therefore, p k will be lambda by mu raise to 2 into lambda by mu raise to k minus 2. So, the whole thing is this. So, therefore, um, you uh, there is no problem in uh, solving your balance equations. And then since all the uh, probabilities must add up to uh, 1, so you get the expression for p naught, which is a geometric series here. And of course, except that rho should be not equal to 1, uh, otherwise you can add this and that gives you 1 minus. So, because when rho is equal to 1, you will have a simplification. So, that can be written down immediately. So, therefore, this is your value of p naught and so you get a closed form for the p n, which is lambda by mu raise to n into 1 minus rho upon 1 minus rho raise to k plus 1. So, this is valid for n varying, n varying from 0 to k. Right? Now, you uh, want to find out the average number of people in the system. <coughs> so, this will be uh, sigma n p n and varying from 0 to k and uh, so, you just substitute for p n, this is what you get and again we will use the same trick uh, that uh, lambda n lambda by mu raise to n. So, this can be written as derivative of lambda by mu raise to n respect to rho. So, rho, rho raise to n. So, n rho raise to n. So, that will be and summation of course, your n varying from 0 to k. So, if you take a rho outside, uh, then it will be, uh, uh, yeah. So, this will be then uh, rho uh, derivative of rho is to n and then again so finite series I can interchange. Uh, so, d by d rho outside this summation and varying from 0 to k rho n and that gives you um, uh, again a geometric series and the summation is this. So, derivative of this d by d rho on minus rho raise to k plus 1 upon 1 minus rho. So, differentiate the numerator this is minus k plus 1 rho raise to k into 1 minus rho minus 1 minus rho raise to k plus 1 into derivative of this, which is minus 1 right, divided by 1 minus rho whole square and just simplify and finally, you will get this as. So, I have just separated out the two terms rho upon 1 minus rho minus k plus 1 rho to k plus 1 divided by 1 minus rho raise to k plus 1. Okay. Uh, there was a yeah, so this 1 minus rho, uh, the 1 minus rho cancels here, 
So, you are left with uh, 1 minus rho, the power 2 is gone and then the rho part here. So, rho 1 minus rho I have written out here and there is a 1 here. So, then this gets coupled with this. So, minus k plus 1 rho raised to k plus 1 rho is outside here divided by 1 minus rho k plus 1. So, this easily you can see simplifies to this expression. Hmm. Now, we just want to look at the long term uh, the behavior if, if you allow k to become large we want to look at this. So, for rho less than 1 rho k plus 1 will go to uh, 0 as k goes to infinity and earlier we have shown that this series is con this converges k sigma rho, k sigma raise to uh, sorry rho raise to k summation the series converges to rho upon 1 minus rho whole square we have already seen this because this is an arithmetic geometric series right and so if a series converges then the necessary condition is that the nth term must go to zero as k goes as k goes to infinity right so therefore k rho raise to k must go to zero which implies that k plus 1 into rho k plus 1 goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. So, now if you look at this here, uh, this is going to 0. So, this uh, reduces to 1 and k plus 1 rho k plus 1 goes to 0. So, therefore, uh, your limiting value of L when rho is less than 1 and as k goes to infinity. So, the limiting value of L is rho upon 1 minus rho, which is the m m 1 case. So, you see you can immediately uh, conclude that uh, you know uh, when you have the m m k case that means, you have a limited uh, space uh, for uh, people to wait uh, that is a, a k people can wait or k units can wait. Then, um, we, uh, so th this model relates to that, but if you make the space unlimited that means, there is no restriction on how many people can wait in the system, then the system reduce then, then the uh, uh, whole process reduces to the m m 1 case. So, this validates uh, that this validates the m m k case. That means, whatever we have derived uh, the values of l and so on, they, uh, they are valid in the sense that uh, they correspond to the m m 1 case in case your uh, space becomes uh, unlimited. So, uh, uh, as many people as you want can wait uh, for to be serviced. So, in that case uh, it will be the m m 1 case. right? So, uh, you can you know. So, there are many ways in which you can also try to uh, validate the model that you have constructed. So, this is one of them.